Wonderful. Good afternoon or morning, everyone, depending what part of the country you're in. Hope everybody's having a good day thus far. Welcome. My name is Baylor Rice. I'm one of the pharmacists and owner here at South River Compounding Pharmacy. Today, we're going to be talking about thyroid health. So how to elevate the functioning and optimize the functioning of your thyroid gland. I uh, do want to remind everybody that um, you are muted. Uh, please remain muted as we are recording these. And uh, you will be able to find that once it gets downloaded and everything's recorded, that will pop up on our YouTube channel, which can be found at South River RX, um, as all of our socials are going to really have that uh, descriptor here at South River RX. So you can go there and you'll be able to find a recording of that probably be up in the next couple of days. Everyone should have received a copy of the handouts prior to the presentation. Uh, generally, we send those out about 30 minutes. So uh, if there's questions, which we do highly encourage questions, please use the chat function. I'll type in here, ask questions here. And we will answer those as we go along today. So with that being said, we're going to start easy for the uh, new folks that are with us. A uh, couple of disclaimers. We don't submit uh, or get review of any, any of the slides prior to the presentation. So these are not reviewed uh, by the FDA or uh, anybody else prior to this. So South River Compounding Pharmacy, who are we? What are we? Uh, we really were the first uh, modern day compounding only pharmacy here in Virginia. Uh, also the first natural medicine pharmacy in Virginia. So we do a lot with vitamins, minerals, nutrients, herbal medication. It's all about our whole philosophy is getting you healthy, keeping you healthy, really optimizing health. We want to get your bar as elevated as we can and keep it elevated. Uh, we do offer personalized consultations, so we can sit down one-on-one -on -one with you. Uh, right now, we're still doing those either via Zoom or WebEx. Um, uh, certainly phone call as well. We've done phone call uh, consultations for many years um, and uh, can really help you kind of put a pathway to optimal health. Uh, we have been trained in functional medicine and integrative approaches, and we have a whole host of a variety of testing that's at our disposal to be able to help you uh, achieve what you want to. And we're going to kind of give you the options, some of the ideas for that as we go forward today. So with that, I'm going to start with what I call my ADD slide. This is really a very busy slide, I understand. But I think it's important to understand because far so many folks we see come in and, and say, you know what? Um, Baylor, I've, I've had my thyroid tested and, and I got the little postcard in the mail that said WNL, WNL standing for within normal limits. And I'm like, dang it, you know, I, I, I went to my practitioner and, and I was having all these symptoms and I thought it was it. And they get the postcard WNL. So, you know, they do more reading. They're not feeling any better. They go back the next year and like, doc, you know what? I've read in more stuff. I really think, you know, this year I have a thyroid issue. Please, will you draw the labs again? And again, postcard WNL. That goes on typically, I've found for about 10 years. So it takes about 10 years for this feedback loop from the pituitary hypothalamus to catch up with the thyroid gland to where finally the labs get off enough to where it's like, hey, wow, I know what your problem is. You've got a thyroid issue. Well, why wait that time? Why wait for this feedback loop to get off, let's start addressing this as symptoms start creeping in and in front of us. Um, so that's really where our focus is and, and where we try uh, to be is, is helping you from the get go. So with this, the hypothalamus regulates the pituitary. The pituitary hits the sex hormones, the thyroid, and the adrenal glands. So Today, our main focus is on the thyroid, but really, if we don't at least mention these others, then we are missing part of the boat because as we get older, more and more things get off, and each one of these have feedback loops to the other affecting one another. And there's a really big negative feedback loop from the adrenals 
to the thyroid. So we are going to spend a little bit of time today speaking about the adrenal glands and what they do and how they impact the thyroid. So overall, what we want to do is get balance in this whole plane right through there. Okay, so with that, our thyroid gland certainly has many different follicles in it. Uh, this has been um, uh, blown up for 25 uh, times on that. So there's this feedback loop, right, from the hypothalamus the pituitary to the thyroid gland. So when the brain is sensing, hey, I don't have enough thyroid hormone, it sends messengers. It sends this what's called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, to the thyroid gland. So, hey, let's make more thyroid hormone. Typically, what is it making? It's making that T4, so tetraiodothyronine. It's a thyroid backbone with four different iodine molecules on it, right? Well, that has to be metabolized into the active free T3 molecule, so the backbone with three iodine molecules on it. So one of these has to be plucked off. It has to be pulled off. Well, half the time it pulls off the wrong one, and that's called reverse T3. Okay, and we'll talk more about this in just a minute. But what we see so often is this feedback loop number comes back okay within normal limits, but things are off where the rubber meets the road with either the T4 or the free T3, reverse T3. So that's what we're going to kind of focus a little bit on. Uh, today. So some functionings of the thyroid gland. Think about it. it. It's regulating our metabolism, right? And that's where a lot of folks will hit is, is with that hypothyroid. So underactive thyroid, sluggish thyroid. Think sluggish thyroid, sluggish metabolism. Also, it's affecting body temperature. So it's really that thermostat, right? Too hot, too cold. It affects our immune function, our cellular function, growth and development. It affects our energy. So it's also that gas pedal. So the, the gas pedal from the aspect of, oh, man, I'm just absolutely fatigued. I don't have energy to, to put one foot in front of the other. Um, certainly affects cardiovascular disease as the thyroid gets off, we tend to see an increase in lipids, right? So that cholesterol increases. Affects brain function, affects fat breakdown and metabolism, and it certainly affects oxygen utilization, which again can feed back, and all this stuff can feed back ultimately affecting that energy piece. So some questions I typically ask my patients and, and this we do as a screen looking at what we think is going on with the thyroid gland. So there's about 19 questions I ask, and depending how many of these that you answer and kind of check off. So as you go through these, and if you're going, okay, well, check, check, I have unusual fatigue, unrelated exertion. I'm wearing socks to bed. I'm dressing in layers. I've got anxiety leading to panic. I'm, Weight, you know, I'm eating like a bird, exercising like a fiend, and the weight's not going anywhere. Aches and pains unrelated to exercise, increased problems with digestion or allergies, mental sluggish focus, forgetful. Anyone, certainly family history of thyroid issues, dry skin, acne, eczema, periods of depression or decreased sex drive, family history of diabetes, anemia, rheumatoid arthritis, early grain hair, dry hair falling out. Lots of menopausal symptoms or, or migraines despite um, estrogen therapy. Certainly history of whiplash or neck injuries. Um, a lot of times that's going to come from motor vehicle accidents. History um, or lots of exposure to chlorine, bromine, or other hydrofluorocarbons like fluoride. Exhausted by evening yet trouble sleeping. Waking up tired, having a suboptimal temperature. So, the best time to hit that, and I'll have a slide in a bit on how to take your temperature and when, uh, but before your feet hit the floor in the morning. Then, you know, so if you're checking off and you got a handful of these, and we probably need to look a little bit deeper. If you've got certainly 10 out of 19, then, then absolutely we need to see a full thyroid panel and see what's going on. So I'm going to start with hyperthyroidism. So hyperthyroidism, so that's going to be when the thyroid is overactive. Now, from a TSH perspective, 
again, that's the feedback from the pituitary hypothalamus to the thyroid gland. So in that, the TSH normal on that is about 0.45 to 4.5. That's a huge range. I like it less than two, preferably closer to one. So under or rather hyperactive is when that TSH is down here or lower, right? So, I mean, you know, sometimes I'll see folks with 0.03. So very hyperactive. Now with that piece, hyperthyroid, hyperactive, hypertension, right? Nervous, palpitation, sweating, right? Typically we'll see more weight loss, hard time holding on to weight. We can still see fatigue on this side sometimes too. And typically, you know, we'll have some goiters or some nodules with the thyroid. So what do we do when we have hyperthyroid? Well, there's certainly some medications that, that can be given. Uh, your practitioner could prescribe beta blockers or something called propylthiouracil, methimazole, um, sometimes hydrocortisone to kind of help kind of downregulate that thyroid um, just a little bit. Certainly more extreme cases, they'll give you radioactive iodine to kind of blow out the thyroid. Now, once you kind of do something like that or, you know, and or, um, surgery, right? Removal of the thyroid. If they can't get it under control with medications, certainly going to these extreme things. And certainly if you do that, then, then you're going to need to be on thyroid replacement because you're going to need to maintain proper levels. Uh, but certainly if we have an autoimmune condition with a thyroid, so something like um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, one thing you need to understand Gluten-free is an absolute must. We must stay away from gluten. Gluten adds, what that can do is typically it's increase in inflammation. So there's with autoimmune thyroiditis, typically we've got an immune component. We've got an inflammatory component as well. So we don't want to do anything to the system that's going to increase that inflammation. Aspartame. Well, that's, you know, we got some fake sugars here. What's the problem with some of these fake sugars? Aspartame gets metabolized to form aldehyde. Yes, folks, that's what they preserve bodies when they die with. And then Splenda, um, that gets converted over to chlorinated table sugar. So as I just mentioned over here, you know, what can affect thyroid function and what can affect that metabolism of the T4 going to T3 Chlorine, right? So here, if you're doing this this fake sugar that is a chlorinated table sugar, it's going to be affecting the metabolism of those um, iodine molecules. Another option that we can do is something called compounded LDN, low dose naltrexone. Low dose naltrexone is very low dose of naltrexone we make in the lab. It does require prescription. So anything we make in the lab requires a prescription. Um, it hits the immune piece. It also hits the inflammatory piece. Okay, so some more information on that. Um, hits a variety of different areas, right? So this is a lot of different pathways that we're hitting with LDN. So I use it for A, all of my autoimmune patients, I use it for my chronic inflammatory patients. I use it for my pain patients. Um, it does take a while to kind of kick in and build up. We typically will start with 1.5 milligrams at bedtime for a week. Then we increase to three milligrams, which is two of the 1.5 milligram capsules for a week, and then go to three, which is 4.5. So generally we'll, we'll, it'll be kind of a two phase script. So the first RX, will be for the 1.5 milligram capsules. Generally, we'll do something like 60 caps, and then we'll have a second RX on hold for 4.5 milligram capsules, right? So we have you kind of titrate up, and then we contain um, or, or maintain on the 4.5 thereafter. Some gluten-free grains, so you have an idea with that. So certainly amaranth, teff, quinoa, basmati, uh, millet, buckwheat, so definitely some label reading. So just because gluten-free doesn't necessarily mean that you have to avoid grains 100%. Now, certainly if you're sensitive to grains, if you're doing something like ketogenic or paleo, you're, you're going to be having decreased grains anyway from that aspect.
So what are some nutritionals that we can do for hyperthyroidism? There's also a lot we can do botanically for this. Lots of different nutrients, right? Um, typically, we'll kind of, uh, I'll, I'll do a combination. Uh, there's a formulation we've got called thyroid support complex that has a lot of these micronutrients already built into it. So it saves you from taking a variety of things. Um, and then from the inflammatory perspective, inflavonoid complex is a uh, curcumin bioflavonoid formulation. So a natural anti-inflammatory to decrease the inflammatory piece. And then active immune support is a combination product. We originally put that together really aimed at COVID um, and how the inflammasome reacts within the system. So hitting both immune, hitting viral, hitting inflammation. Um, but really have found it, it does an amazing job for viral and immune issues in general. So that has uh, something called NAC and acetylcysteine built into it, um, which, oh, was, how far back was I? So um, I think we had NAC right there, but um, oh, here's the slide. So we've got 600 milligrams of NAC in it, 250 milligrams of quercetin, 150 milligrams of EGCG, um, and 200 milligrams of vitamin C and 30 milligrams of zinc. So really the vitamin C that's in it is not designed to be replacement for vitamin C. What this is doing is helping with the transportation of the quercetin and the zinc getting into that nucleus of the cell. Um, so really hitting the viral piece. And typically, um, anywhere from one to six capsules a day, kind of depending where you are. Baseline is kind of one twice a day, but we'll kind of increase that up depending. Um, side note, uh, also using this for what we call our, our COVID long haulers. So those folks that have gotten COVID and are still having um, uh, issues down the road. Um, again, with that, typically we're going to, Pull that in and hit that a little bit hot, harder. So now let's spend some time talking about hypothyroidism. That's typically where we see more people, you know, of the folks with thyroid issue. I mean, you're going to see well above 75% of those having hypo versus hyper, probably closer to the 90% range. So some of the different symptoms there are certainly brittle nails, the cold intolerances, constipation. So things get drier, things get drier in general. Certainly we're going to see changes with, with bowel movements as well. Muscle cramps and weakness, infertility. So if you've had a history of infertility, trouble with concentrating, um, throat pain, weight gain, fatigue, uh, all of those different things, then that's typically what we're going to see more from the hypothyroid piece. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's some things that it, a lot of times it's that T4 to T3 conversion, which is where this is coming from. So, some medications that you may be on that could be impacting that T4 to T3 conversion, certainly beta blockers, the irony there, right? Um, birth control pills, iodinated contrasts, lithium, phenytoin, steroids, theophylline, um, synthetic estrogen. Nutrient deficiencies, chromium, copper, iodine, iron, selenium, zinc, vitamin A, B2, B6, B12. So that's why you see a lot of these nutrients in what do we use to help replace and help support thyroid? Well, because we generally see them as deficiencies. Cruciferous vegetables, soy. Now by that, I don't mean don't eat any cruciferous vegetables. So you folks out there that hate broccoli, don't use that as an excuse to avoid broccoli. Um, what I mean by that is don't eat five pounds of broccoli a day, right? Don't have soy milk for breakfast, soy burger for lunch, soy this in the afternoon, soy that for dinner. You don't wanna go overboard. It can affect that conversion. Other things that can certainly affect the conversion, getting older, right? Well, that's a double-edged sword. Getting older certainly beats the alternative, right? Alcohol, especially excessive alcohol, lipoic acid, diabetes, fluoride, lead, mercury, surgeries, 
surgery is really affecting that stress, radiation, pesticides, obesity. Obesity is increasing inflammation. That's going to affect everything. So what are some prescriptive options for if I am hypothyroid, I've got an elevated TSH, and typically, again, TSH, 0.45 to 4.5. You know, most docs aren't going to start talking about it being up until it's about 3.5 or above. Some aren't going to prescribe you anything unless it's above that 4.5, so 4.6 plus. Typically, where they're going to start you with is a t synthetic T4. So, you know, Synthroid, Levothyroid, Levothyroxin um, is where they'll generally start you with. Now, problem with a lot of different commercial products, you've got cornstarch, you've got dyes and or lactose. Now, for folks that don't have any allergies or sensitivities, and that's not a worry, but certainly if you do have allergies or sensitivities to those things, we need to think about that and be aware of it. We can always compound a T4 that doesn't have any of those inert ingredients in it um, because we don't want to cause a negative by doing a positive thing. T4, T3 combinations. So typically those are going to be your glandular products. So Armour Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, West Thyroid, Thyrolar. Um, again, uh, these things can have additives to it. We can always compound a T3, T4 combination. We can also compound a thyroid USP formulation. Um, so a lot of times we'll get where the commercial products, somebody may be on, we'll get a call from a practitioner saying, you know, they've been on this product, they're doing okay, uh, but yet their T3 still needs a little bump. So, you know, can we compound something that, you know, instead of having them take Nature Throid plus an extra T3, can we just go ahead and combine it all together, or, you know, do a thyroid USP with a little bit of extra T3? Absolutely. That's the beauty of compounding. We work and treat each individual patient as such and, and really optimize your, your therapy. T3, commercially, there's something called Cytomel. Now, the problem with that, it's available as five milligram, 25, and, and five mics and 25 mics. So not a lot of dosing variety there. And it's also, the other problem with that is it's in sucrose and talc. So it's an immediate release product. Why that's important to understand. T3 has a two hour half-life. So from the time you take that drug, you're gonna reach peak plasma concentration within two hours and boom, out, right? Versus T4 has a 24 hour half-life, right? So you can dose that once a day, it can be immediate release, sustained release, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have much better, what's called area under the curve for that drug distribution. So that's why a lot of doctors, practitioners won't prescribe or don't like to prescribe T3 is because of that short window. Uh, somebody will say, well, gee, you know, I, I tried Cytomel, I tried T3, and I, I maybe felt good for five, 10 minutes, and then um, I didn't feel so good, right? It, it, it went away. Um, why is that? Well, because of that very short half-life. Um, so we can compound that in, in what's called a sustained release preparation, releasing that T3 over an eight to 12 hour time period, therefore giving you much better drug distribution. Now you may say, well, Baylor, you know, my doc won't prescribe going back to, um, you know, armor thyroid or T3. My doc says, well, I don't wanna do that because desiccated thyroid is not consistent from dose to dose. I can't tell you how many times that we've heard that one. Well, that's why I gave you this little piece. It was put in the Federal Register, August 14th, 1997, volume 62, number 157, quote unquote. In 1997, the FDA reported, no currently marketed orally administered levothyroxine sodium product has been shown to demonstrate consistent potency and stability, and thus no currently marketed orally administered levothyroxine sodium product is generally recognized as safe and effective. That's huge, right? So for your practitioners that say, well, gee, I don't like giving desiccated thyroid. I don't like using armor or nature through it. I don't want to do that compounded stuff because they don't know what they're doing. Well, bull, I can show you data that we do know what we're doing and, and we do uh, third party analysis on what we do. Um, this is an article I'll throw back. Well, doc, you prescribe Synthroid all the time or Levothyroxine sodium and, and did you know? And most of them, kind of 
blank in the face. No, totally unaware. Um, so, but at the end of the day, if you have a practitioner that's not working with you, that's not drawing the labs that you want to, not listening to you, get a new practitioner. Don't bang your head against the wall. Get somebody that's going to listen to you. Get somebody that's going to work with you. Get somebody that's going to take you serious. So monitor. What do we want to see? Well, typically what most practitioners are going to do is do what's called a TSH with a reflex T4. So if that TSH comes back off a little bit, it's going to automatically kick out a T4 level. Well, that's fine, but what did I say? TSH is the feedback loop. And then T4 is going to get metabolized into the free T3 or reverse T3. So just knowing that really doesn't tell us the whole picture. This is the rubber meeting the road. I want to see a full thyroid panel. Free T3, free T4, reverse T3, TSH, TPO, thyroid antibodies, ferritin, as well as vitamin D25OH if you haven't had that recent. The important aspects of these two guys here, they can impact how the T3, the free T3, binds at the receptor level. So all of your labs, even these labs, can appear normal but yet still symptomatic, and that can be because the vitamin D and or the ferritin may be in the toilet and we're not binding it properly, okay? Um, certainly, you can always look at magnesium and selenium, zinc, iodine to give you an idea too. Monitoring that temperature, looking at symptoms like we had earlier. So if you're checking off symptoms, symptoms, symptoms. The other thing too that we'll need to consider, what did I say earlier? The adrenals have a huge negative feedback loop to the thyroid. The best way to look at adrenal function is with salivary testing. Why? If you go into your practitioner and have blood work, where does also single spot in time, right? The normal ranges, normal ranges are huge. I want to look at it as what is it before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, before bedtime? it should have this diurnal pattern to it. So looking at it a single spot in time really doesn't tell you what the heck's going on, right? So looking at that, also looking at DHEA. So really that spitting in some tubes, we've got kits available, we can send you a kit, you can pick one up, um, send it off, we get the results back in a couple of weeks. If you're menopausal or for men, andropausal or having hormonal symptoms, then let's look at some sex hormones. Let's see where those are at. For guys, we've got a little bit different panel. This is more for females here. Um, you can reach out to Allison and she can tell you what we wanna see there for guys. Um, let's look at some hormone levels. Baylor, I'm 43 years old. Why do I need to be thinking about hormones? Well, guess what? For men and women, hormones are peaked at 35 years old. After that, it's all downhill. Now, what can impact that? If you have a female that, you know, last uh, was pregnant at 40 years old, then certainly that's that's going to push that back certainly a little bit. But from there, hormones start dropping off. Again, hormones, the sex hormones are going to affect thyroid. Sex hormones are going to affect adrenals. Adrenals are going to affect sex hormones. So it's good to kind of know the whole picture, what's going on, because so many different hormonal symptoms also cross over and are similar symptoms of that of low thyroid. So what's coming from what? Unless we look at what's in the gas tank, we really don't know, right? You don't just drive your car aimlessly to the gas station and fill it up. Oh, Bessie, you feel like you're low on petrol today. No, you look at the fuel gauge. Yeah, you got a quarter of a tank. I need to stop by soon, right? You look at your gauges, you react accordingly. Let's get our gauges, let's get what the levels are, and address it accordingly as well. So I promised you the basal metabolic temperature guide. So shake down the thermometer upon awakening, before your feet hit the floor, put it in the armpit for 10 minutes, okay? If you're menstruating, start the second day of menstruation. Postmenopausal women or men, any day of the month is fine. Uh, you know, normal thyroid function for that. Um, should be above 97.8 to 98.2 under the arm. Uh, certainly if it's rectal or, or oral, then it's going to be a bit, a bit higher. So if you're sub, right? So if you're below that, 
then generally that's indicative of sluggish or sluggish thyroid. So what are some of the nutrients we can use for thyroid? Well, I kind of always like to start with baseline, right? Well, what should we do? Like building a house, we need to get our foundation solid before we try to put the house and the roof on, right? So let's start with a good solid multi mineral vitamin antioxidant rich formulation. That's what our phytonutrient multi is. It also has methylated B vitamins. So methylated, half the population has what's called an MTHFR deficiency. Um, so that's where you're not metabolizing um, your uh, uh, folic acid and B12 properly. Um, so I hedge the bet. I put everybody on methylated bees. Fish oils. I love omega-3 essential fatty acids. I don't know why I just changed to um, color on that. Let's go to blue. There we go. Um, fish oils, omega-3 essential fatty acids. Good for everything head to toe. Okay. Vitamin D3. 5,000 IUs plus K2. K2 is good to help prevent atherosclerosis, so hardening of the arteries. K2 also helps to drive the, the D as well as magnesium and calcium, boron, silica, strontium into the bones. Um, so I, I start with 5,000 IUs a day. Certainly if we have labs and you're deficient, then I'll go higher. Normal, right, normal with vitamin D is 30 to 100. Optimal is 60 to 80. So, so many people I see will come back at 34. Hey, I'm normal. I'm 34. No, far from optimal. 60 to 80. Look at the data on immune function, inflammation, et cetera, especially with COVID. It's going to decrease your chance of getting COVID. And then if you get COVID, it's going to dramatically decrease your symptoms. CBD. Big, huge fan of CBD. If you want to learn more about that, um, we should have up a CBD webinar on our YouTube channel, so you can like and subscribe on that and have access to that. Uh, CBD hits over 220 receptors in the human body. Inflammation, immune, thyroid, list goes on and on. Um, anxiety, stress, sleep. The trick with CBD is just, you know, generally I start with 15 milligrams and increase the dosage up as um, tolerated, right? Um, until you hit your desired effect. Or if you start getting daytime sleepiness, um, we decrease the dose. A question came in, how does low iodine affect the thyroid? Great question, right? So you've got your thyroid backbone with four iodine molecules on it. Well, if we're deficient in iodine, that's going to affect thyroid function. Absolutely. We need iodine for proper thyroid function. So go back to all the symptoms, go back to the issues. That's integral piece for thyroid function is iodine. Vitamin A, certainly uh, vitamin A hypothyroidism. A lot of times there's lack of ability to be able to convert that. Um, vitamin A can affect over 43 genes in the genome. Vitamin D, already touched on that just a little bit. Uh, from the bones, thyroid, immune, inflammation, vitamin E, again, free radical scavenger, helps with the conversion of T4 to T3. Iodine, um, certainly about 15 milligrams um, in adults uh, is, is contained in the thyroid, so it's, it's a primary substance used to manufacture thyroid hormone of, of thyroxin, as well as triadothyronine. Um, so that's absolutely huge. So, you know, if you think back to nuclear waste, nuclear ener energy, Hiroshima, so in, in a nuclear type of reaction, what does that do? That affects thyroid function. So one way to balance that out is take lots of iodine. So that nuclear energy binds up with iodine, therefore protecting the thyroid. Um, I know there was a scare a couple of years ago, I forget what happened. Um, Overseas, I think something, a nuclear reactor or something happened and, and 
saw some fallout along the California coast. So, you know, I have patients all over the world. And so patients in that part, as well as in, in California, we're having to take um, extra iodine. Um, so typical daily dose, 150 mics a day. Certainly if there's an issue, we'll take that much higher. Selenium, again, T4, T3, around 200 mics. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. Just as with anything, right? It's optimizing that um, uh, thyroid function and optimizing the nutrient levels within the system. What do I think of? I think you meant iodorol, which is a thyroid supplement or Lugol solution for low iodine. Um, absolutely, iodorol is my preferred uh, formulation for that. It is a high dose uh, potassium iodide. And, and for that example I was given just a moment ago for my patients that were in California and patients overseas, uh, that's exactly what we we're using. We we're using iodorol uh, because that is one of the best forms for absorption and to really make a difference with serum iodine um, levels. Zinc, absolutely essential as well. Um, typically, you're going to see lower levels with cancer as well. So um, when you get those zinc and selenium levels up, it's going to help with that carcinogenic process as well. Um, so zinc, absolutely essential uh, with subclinical hypothyroidism, as probably most everybody has seen with COVID and the shortages of zinc, right? Zinc is going to help um, when that gets into the cell. It, it helps to really um, rid the body of the virus. It helps kind of make things slippery so the virus doesn't attach and, and you get shedding. That's the word I was looking for. You, you shed the virus much faster. 10 milligrams plus or minus typical dose when we replace it. Again, we, we've got zinc in 30 milligram capsules. I'll crank it up to 90 milligrams a day with some patients. I'm not sitting here saying, hey, everybody on here, if you think you have a thyroid issue, take 90 milligrams. No, typically what we'll do, we've got a zinc solution. It's called zinc drink. And you put about a teaspoon of that underneath your, your tongue, hold it in your mouth for about 10 seconds. And if it has a strong metallic -y taste and your levels, th this is a very rudimentary, um, easy, inexpensive way to test your zinc. If it has a strong, if you have a strong mineral taste and your zinc levels are fine. Um, if it tastes like water, then we need to replace zinc. The higher you go up with zinc, generally when you go 50 plus milligrams, then we're gonna also need to add copper on board, right? Because zinc will deplete copper. If you get copper too low, then we can see some neurological issues. So again, that's why it's important to work with somebody that knows what they're doing. So you don't kind of fix one thing and throw something else off. Amino acids and other herbal support. Tyrosine is an essential amino acid for thyroid function. Bladderact, I'll say Irish moss. There's a variety of glandulars, uh, particular thyroid glandulars. Um, we can do pituitary glandulars, hypothalamus glandulars, vitamin C, protein shakes, making sure we have enough protein on board are going to all help with thyroid support. So where do we start with many different things? Again, go to basics. Phytonutrient multi, fish oils, vitamin D3, CBD. <clears throat> then from there, uh, typically, one of my favorites is the thyroid support complex. So with a lot of these nutrients we've mentioned today, this has it all built in. So it saves you from having to take t so many different things. It's typically one capsule three times a day. Okay. Um, works very well. Hypo or hyper. That's the beauty of it. Right. Trick with natural, with medicine and functional medicine is, is, Number one, do no harm. So this formula is great because it helps with the modulation of the thyroid. So if you're too high, it helps pull you down. Too low, helps modulate things for up. So that's many times walk, suck it up, quack, suck it up. So if you've got a lot of symptoms, but yet you've had some normal levels, well, first step is let's add in thyroid support complex, see if that can help support thyroid. Then plus or minus, we may add some of these other things. I don't use thyroid 150 unless I have thyroid levels. That is only used for hypo, okay? We 
do not use that for height better. So let's talk about adrenals for a moment, okay? Since, as I stated, they have such a huge impact on the thyroid. So as you're looking through these symptoms here, I'm not gonna necessarily read them off to you. I have a questionnaire on our consult form, absent, you know, mild, moderate, and, and um, severe, right? So if you're checking some of these off, but you know, over here with moderate, and mild and severe and or well i've got everything checked off in the mild. depending on your severity if you kind of over here quite a bit then we need to be thinking let's look at that cortisol salivary cortisol level so we can see what that diurnal pattern is right and you'll notice wow some of these symptoms are the same as thyroid being off right we saw sleep issues we saw tender to touch we saw um, not necessarily weather changes, but temperature changes, decreased sex drive, energy, um, energy, energy, right, crashing. So yes, there is some absolute overlap. And that's why we have to kind of discern where is it coming from? Is it coming from both? Far too often I find it's coming from both baskets. Just, you know, is it 50, 50, 50 in the thyroid, 50 in the uh, adrenal camp, or is it, Okay, maybe 25% in the sex hormones, maybe 50 over here in the adrenals and 25 over here in the thyroid. And of course, a lot of times there's unknown, right? So that's what we want to kind of unfold. What do we do for if we're having a lot of different thyroid or adrenal symptoms? There again, if you're checking off a bunch of these, um, certainly, ideally, let's, if they're real severe, let's look at some uh, cortisol levels. If I've got some mild, maybe one or two moderate things, but nothing too severe, then a lot of times I'll add cortisol support. That's kind of analogous to the thyroid support complex. It helps settle down an overactive adrenal. It helps kind of pull up an underactive. So it does help modulate the adrenals. Again, no harm, no foul. So we'll add that in. It's one capsule two times a day. So typically one at breakfast, one at lunch. If energy is kind of more of an issue, then I'll use the cortisol, the adrenal support instead. And then we can add um, L-theanine to either one of those. L-theanine helps balance the norepi and epi, okay? So especially when that mind's kind of racing, we've got so much on our shoulders, we just wanna, that's what the L-theanine is gonna do. It's derived from the green tea leaf so it balances all the whole neurochemistry panel, um, but key, not addictive, non drowsy, non goofy, non loopy. Okay. For adults, generally I'll do 200 milligrams, which is one capsule up to four times a day. Tranquil is an herbal Ayurvedic formula that kind of more if you've got stress and if worry really is a strong component with you, then we'll gravitate towards the Tranquil. Again, Boxley's Organic CBD. Um, so, you know, if we're having adrenal stuff, then we'll crank up that CBD dose. Or if you're not on CBD, then we'll add CBD. Um, if you're not on the multi, then we'll add some methylation support. Again, I've got all these other things here just so you realize and understand there's a lot of different tools in my tool bag I have for that. Okay. I don't put somebody on all of these things, but depending what's going on. And that's why the consults can be so important. So we can really assess and ascertain what's going to be the best protocol for you. If it's, well, look, I've got some symptoms. Let me just get started on something, try to start some support. Again, kind of pair with cortisol support and, or maybe add some L-theanine. If you have a lot of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed, then that L-theanine can work well. Very safe. I use it for kids as low as three years old. I use it for granny at 103. I use it for puppy dogs and kitty cats for separation anxiety, thunderstorms, things like that. Okay. Quality. Anybody that's coming to the store knows I'm a huge, huge advocate for quality. Um, in our lab, we are extremely precise. We send things off for third-party analysis testing. Um, we do that because, A, we care and we want to make sure we do it right. We validate our formulations. We also validate our formulas, our 
processes, our equipment. We also validate our technicians. So likewise, when we use a supplement, I deal with companies that are registered with the FDA following good manufacturing practices, doing dissolution, disintegration, mass spectroscopy, liquid chromatography, so that if we go an appropriate amount of time and we don't see the response that's desired, then we have to think, okay, what's going on? What do we need to do, right? Do we need to look deeper? Do we need to get some labs? Or do we need to add something to it? Asking the right questions. So diet, TSH increases when we don't have a good source of protein. So earlier when I had, yes, we use a variety of protein shakes. Um, and that's why, because if we're not getting enough protein, then we're typically not going to have a proper functioning thyroid gland. Um, also, if you're hypoacidic, so, and, and think about that if you have reflux. A lot of folks with reflux actually are hypoacidic to where we need to increase the acid in the gut to help with breaking down. So we'll use something called either digestive support or Metagest um, that has betaine and glutamic acid HCL in it. Um, and we've got a whole info sheet in that so we can help guide you along with that. Overall, I generally gravitate towards the Mediterranean style diet. Lots of color, organic, free range, lean meat, clean meat, um, five to six small meals a day versus two or three large meals. Um, exercise intensity. So that is something that we don't run into with every patient, but I have run into it and typically do run into it a number of times a year. So if you are running and continue to run at that 90% maximum heart rate, the rate of T3 and T free T3 start to fall. So that is going to affect that T3 conversion. Um, so be aware of that. Lots of different books out there. So for someone that typed in the iodine question, um, this book by David Brownstein, Iodine, Why You Need It, is fantastic. His overall uh, book on overcoming thyroid disorder is great. Richard Marion Lee Shamas wrote a great book on thyroid power a number of years ago. Um, if you've got a lot of adrenal stuff going on and want to see a good read on that, Jim Wilson's Adrenal Fatigue. Now, mind you, when you read through Jim's book, he's going to have a ton of different supplements. So you're going to read through it and go, oh, that makes sense. Boom, I'm going to write that down. This, you know, next thing you know, you got a list of 20 supplements there. Again, very overwhelming. Take this book with a grain of salt, pull out of it the information you need. Let us help guide you through what to do and how to optimize that. Okay. It is all in balance, like with everything else, right? Are we getting enough rest? Ideally, I want eight hours of straight sleep. Not, well, I'm going to bed at 11 and I'm waking up at seven. Yeah, but I'm waking up again two or three times, you know, a couple of times to go to the bathroom, the kitty cat's waking me up, the puppy dog's waking me up, my spouse is kicking me, snoring, whatever the case may be. I want eight hours of straight sleep. That's what's going to help reboot and reset, let the adrenals take a breather and get ready for the next day, right? 150 minutes of cardio a week. If you can't get into cardio yet, give me at least 10,000 steps a day. If nowhere near that, work up to it, right? Start somewhere and then build. Most folks have a smartphone these days, right? Well, smartphones are going to catch your steps. Is it as accurate as is a watch or the band or there's um, a pedometer? No, but it's going to give you a general idea. You know, and if you're consistent, if it says I did 2,000 steps a day and the next day, all right, I got it to 3,000 and then 3,500, right? It's going to serve as a barometer. Your overall health wellness, what sort of um, disease states, what sort of family history, how is your personal history? Supportive relationships. Do you have supportive relationships or do you have toxic relationships? Um, nutritional status, hormonal balance, environment. Um, it is a whole balance of this stuff. So certainly we've hit on some highlights today, but please keep in mind, uh, we can certainly dive deeper and look at things more in depth if needed. So a review. Again, our everyday essentials, right? 
This is what we should be doing every day. I did include dosing range here. And you may say, well, Baylor, do I take two or do I take four fish oils? Healthy, not much family history, at least two a day. Baylor, I got high cholesterol or high family history, cardiovascular disease, or my blood sugar's off, or I need to lose some weight. Then I'm going to gravitate towards four a day. Okay. At least a 5,000 I use of vitamin D. If we have a lab, if your lab comes back in the 30s or below, then, you know, take two of those 5,000, which is going to be 10,000 I use per day. Okay. So, Baylor, my thyroid's off. I've got some symptoms, although my TSH is, you know, 2.5. So, my doc won't, won't write a script for me for my thyroid. Um, well, let's start on thyroid support complex one, three times a day. If you've got that autoimmune component, um, then let's add the active immune support. Or if you've had COVID and you still have some COVID-esque symptoms, or if you are a long hauler, then we might even increase that dosage further. If adrenals are impacting, you've got some adrenal symptoms, let's add in the cortisol support. One, at, one with breakfast, one with lunch, plus or minus L-theanine, depending on the anxiety and feeling overwhelmed. Sleep, if we're not getting a good sleep, ultimate sleep formula is a great broad spectrum sleep formula. Jill and I say start with one, do one for a few nights if that works, stay with one if that doesn't, go to two. Do that for a few nights if two works, hold there. If not, go to three. And if three doesn't work, then let's finish out the bottle. If that doesn't work, then let's try something else. We can also do, we've got this coming in end of the week. So excited about this formula. Uh, we've been working on this for a while. Um, so this will be an end of the week slash beginning of the week, depending on shipping. Um, 25 milligrams of CBD, 3 milligrams of CBN. That is the cannabinoid that uh, hits sleep a little bit harder with 3 milligrams of melatonin. So if you're, well, bail I'm already on some CBD, and ideally I like breaking the dosage up three times a day, then, you know, we can kind of decrease the dosage that we're doing during, during, during the day and use this as the nighttime dose if we want to. If you're having sleep issues, if sleep issues aren't a problem, then stay on the tincture, keep doing what you're doing. Statement from NIH, National Institutes of Health, modulating the endocannabinoid system may have therapeutic potential in almost all diseases affecting humans. That is huge. Again, if you want more info on CBD, go to our YouTube channel and we'll have that up on there. We are running a webinar special. We do have uh, some things that we just overproduced, made too much and have some that are getting short dated um, to blow through on. So box, the Boxley's Organic THC Broad Spectrum CBD, 900 milligram tincture, so it's 30 milligram per ml, the unflavored only. Um, buy one, get one free. That is while supplies last. So when those are gone, they're gone. Uh, so take advantage of that now. Um, you know, most of the tinctures are good you keep it at room temperature they're going to be good six plus months after the um expiry date on that um so uh, anyway don't be afraid of that that's a great deal so take advantage of it so what next start on some baseline supplements you can stop into either one of our locations you can do curbside you can come in, we can ship it to you. You can go to our online store. Uh, we're adding more and more things to our website, our online store every single day. We're making, adding more pictures and making it prettier. Um, have some labs drawn. Again, if you've got a bunch of thyroid symptoms, if you've never had a full thyroid panel, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean for that to pop. Um, then let's look at that full thyroid panel. If it's, have your practitioner draw it. If, if You've got a practitioner you're working with and they won't do it. You can go to our website and I included a hyperlink in here for you today. You can go to our website at southriverrx.com. Click on the services tab and below that will pop up Ulta Lab. So that'll take you to our micro site that lets you order whatever labs you want. Um, it's out of pocket, but it's at about 82% off of retail. Uh, so, especially if you've got a high deductible, or if you don't have insurance, or if you're on um, um, uh, kind of in the donut hole, great option for you. 
we need to look at the salivary piece for the cortisol, get a kit. Allison, she's our patient care coordinator. You can reach her at our phone number or pop her an email at patientcare at southriverrx.com. Um, she can get you coordinated with that. She can also get you scheduled for a consultation. Um, if you're going to get labs and, and, and get both of those, this takes about two weeks to come back. So generally we'll schedule something out three weeks. Um, you know, blood work generally comes back pretty fast, uh, but she can get you scheduled. Those generally we're doing via phone, WebEx or Zoom. Um, so as we're doing today, and then that way I can write notes, I can type things for you. Uh, so it's extremely efficient and works well. So let's see what fuel you have in the gas tank, right? Coordinate that with symptoms, coordinate it with your history, coordinate it with what your goals and objectives are and get you a game plan. Let's get you feeling better. Enough of not feeling optimal. Don't accept that. Let's get that bar where you want it. So I know we've gone over a lot in a fairly short amount of time today. Uh, so please type in whatever questions you have. Um, be happy to answer those in the chat feature for you. Uh, please take the time, give us a review on, on Yelp, Google, or Facebook. Like us on the variety of social channels out there. We're on most all of them. Uh, if you haven't signed up for our email newsletter, uh, you can do that right on our website. I have never, nor will we sell your information. Um, that's here. We try to keep you informed and send you up to date information. And you're very welcome. I'm glad, glad you were able to take the time today and join us. And we do have our whole webinar series up on our website with what's going to be next off the top of my, my head. I'm sorry, I don't recall. I should have put that. I generally make a note for myself, uh, but generally we run them on Thursdays. We've got two or three things generally a month and they're generally from uh, noon until one. So you can sign up for the next webinar right off our website, or uh, it's also on Facebook on the events page on that. Well, thank you. We're having lots of thank yous and happy Easter's and all that stuff. So, yes, I, I wish everybody a happy Easter. Um, hope everybody gets to spend some time with their family uh, this weekend and um, take advantage of, of your loved ones every, not take advantage, but take advantage of the time with your loved ones every, every chance you get. Absolutely. So, I don't see any other questions coming in. Certainly, if you get off and something comes up, as you know, we are we are your resource. Stop in, give us a call, pop us an email, um, and we'll be glad to get that answered for you. Uh, again, we'll probably be getting this loaded up on the YouTube channel, probably, I would say, probably sometime tomorrow. So if there's a piece of this you want to go back and refer to again or hear again, uh, feel free to. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope everybody has a fantastic day, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.